what's going on guys welcome back to another video this is going to be episode 15 of building feed this week i got actually a lot of progress done i almost finished both of the buildings i was very close to finishing them both but i did get one of them completely finished and done so i'm super excited to be able to show you guys that but before we get started make sure to smash that like button and subscribe let's get right into it starting off this week there are a lot of things that i need to update you guys on the first one is last week when I got in all of those sand green leaf pieces, I said that I wasn't going to use those. And what I did was I actually played around with that because I'm kind of starting to run low on the regular green leaf pieces. So I want to have a ton of vines in this mock. So I started mixing in a little bit of olive green, as you can see on the left side, and some sand green, as you can see on the right. Basically, starting to the left, what I did was I used some olive green right here and here, the top two pieces, and I started adding in some olive green on this green piece, kind of at the bottom. So it's kind of a color transition into the olive green, and I honestly really like the way this looks. Originally, I was thinking that this was going to look weird and I didn't want to use olive green because it would take away from the rest of the bright pops of color that the vines give. But when I added it in, it really looks nice. I'm basically saying that this is the vine kind of starting to die a little bit. So you can kind of see towards the bottom, the green with the olive green mixed in, and then the olive green with the green and bright green mixed in at the top. And it just looks like the vine is starting to die or kind of yellow towards the top, which I really, really like. So that covers the olive green. And then moving over to the sand green again, Basically, the idea with this was to make it look kind of the same as the green, so there wasn't really color blending or anything like that. It's just a different color underneath, and honestly, I think it looks pretty good. You can't even really tell, except once you look at the side, then you can kind of tell, but it doesn't look bad. There's no, like, jarring color differences or anything. Basically, it just looks like the same kind of vine that you see all throughout the rest of the mock, so I am going to definitely be mixing this in with the green, maybe not do full vines of the sand green, but definitely mixing it in with the regular green. But that was kind of the first thing that I messed around with and I'm really happy with this because now I have so many more options with the vines that they don't all have to look the same. Another thing is I went through and started adding in the blue flowers, as you can kind of see, which I think definitely helps with kind of distributing the color throughout the entire vine. Now there's a couple little accents that kind of draw your eye from the rest of just the green and pink flowers all over the place. So that is the vines and I'm super happy with that progress. Next thing, as you guys can probably see, I made the archway connecting these two buildings. This one here is the regular boring square and this is the round one. The archway goes right in here and I actually made it so that it separates from the two base plates because the base plates obviously divide right in between these two buildings. So I'm really, really happy with this. Basically what I did was I just used these arch pieces, the same ones as in the windows, and then I just put three plates right in the middle and then added in a little bit of railing. In the middle is the square with the round top and then on either side are the cylinders. So it kind of just keeps on looking like the rest of the railing that we see around the border of the city, which is obviously good. And then I went ahead and made another door. This is kind of similar to the one I had made for the round building, the front door, but basically I just made it a little bit smaller. So we got the plates in the middle like this and the tiles kind of on the top and bottom. So there's that half plate indent of the dark gray which I think looks really nice. And that's definitely good because I don't want all the doors to be this kind of pattern. I went ahead and made one of these for on the other side here that I'll show you in a second, but I made it out of the medium nougat color. So it's not all just gray and boring. So I definitely like the way that looks. I added in some pieces of weathering too, which I think look really nice. So I'll go ahead and move the camera and we can talk about that. So here you can see this door and I really like it. It's the same design as this kind of window section, the window glass door, whatever you want to call it. But I went ahead, as I said, and made it out of the medium nougat. Still has the dark gray trim, which I think still makes sense. And then I went ahead and used some roller skate pieces on their sides for the handles, which I think actually looks really nice and works pretty well. It's a nice little 
pop of metallic shine on the rest of a pretty flat and boring kind of color scheme door. And then you can kind of see towards the top and then some at the bottom, which I can go ahead and move this. I added in some weathering. I think flesh is the name of the color, but it's very similar to the medium nougat and it looks really nice. It adds in a little bit of color variation. And then basically just to separate them, I just pull off this back here and that now lets me just slide them apart like that. So they're connected by one stud, but they kind of separate right in the middle of the walkway or bridge or whatever you want to call it. So I honestly really, really like this. It definitely adds in that kind of Nabu feel and it's like a nice tight, close knit place and it really looks cool. So I'm super happy with the way that this thing turned out. Now moving on to one of my other favorite parts of this building. This is the market stand, the awning thing that I had kind of mentioned a few times in other videos. I finally got around to doing it and I was able to use some of the pieces that I got in from the order as well as lug bulk, which I'm really happy about. The first thing is obviously I have the candlestick pieces at the bottom. This isn't my favorite look, but I'm okay with it. Basically, it's a tiny bit thicker than a regular bar. And then at the bottom, it's the you know bar thickness so it's not my favorite thing as i said but i think it looks all right it's not really a main focal point of the mock but one thing that i was able to do with these pieces is i was able to way over here redo this section way back here so now this is built using those kind of candlestick pieces and i think this looks way better than what i had before i'll kind of move that bag out of the way I think this looks a lot better and I'm able to get much better posability with this now because I'm using those hinge pieces as well as the candlesticks. So really happy with that. That's kind of a side note though. The main focus is back over here on this awning and focusing just on the awning part. I knew that I wanted to use this piece because it's the only kind of big cloth that I had and I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted to do it. Basically what I did, as you can kind of see in the front, is I have a clip, a bar clip, and then I put some studs with the circles or the holes in the center, whatever you wanna call it. And then I put some stud tiles in dark gray on top. So that just goes in the actual holes that are built into the cape. There are three of them. So I got one here, one here, and then one on the other side. And then I have these kind of cross beams that go all the way down, attaching to those snot bricks that I had in there. And I can go ahead and kind of spin this up a little bit so you can kind of see what it looks like under there so i just go ahead and spin this down and then it kind of looks more like the shape that i want so that looks really nice and then moving down basically for the actual market boxes this is just kind of a quick little thing i'm not really going to focus too much on this or anything like that but i just have some fruit and flowers and stuff just kind of chucked in those boxes this is basically all that i wanted down here i didn't want to do anything crazy just kind of a little ambiance area and i think it looks really really nice so i'm super happy with how this entire thing came out kind of zoom out and give you guys a total view of the entire section this is really really cool i love the way that this looks and it's definitely something that we see a lot of on feed so i'm really happy about that because now obviously this kind of makes it feel more of like a living city instead of just buildings with people happening to run around in the streets. Now you can kind of see, you know, where they get their food and stuff like that. So I definitely think this helps as well as just making this big boxy building not feel as boxy. Now because you have something kind of sticking off the side, it takes away from just the straight up rectangular shape of it. So I definitely really, really like the way that this thing turned out. The final part that I had to build for this building is the roof and i said that i wanted this to be a dark orange roof because i wanted it to kind of stand out from the rest of the sand green and obviously you see dark orange roofs on feed and for dark orange the only real roof design is this kind of sloped in angled wedge whatever shape and i have very few pieces in dark orange so i had an idea of using these two by three wedges and kind of putting them next to each other to create that kind of almost like a coffin kind of shape. And I really, really, really like the way this turned out. I'm super happy that it worked because if it didn't, then I kind of would have been screwed with this building. So really, really happy with the way that it works. I can go ahead and kind of take it apart here like this. Basically inside is just a bunch of plates and tiles on the outsides of them, obviously. 
and then I just have some wedges attached at the very end like that. You can kind of see the round one by two plate and doesn't really need to be that round one by two plate. I just did that because I thought it would hide it a little bit better and it kind of does so whatever. But basically we just got a bunch of tiles and plates attached to this hinge brick and ideally there would be a half a plate of separation. This actually kind of stresses, not stresses, but there, it doesn't really fit in quite perfectly. So it's not actually a perfect rectangle. Basically the best way to describe it is this side goes underneath this side, as you can kind of see. And then when you come over here, this side goes underneath this side and this side goes underneath this side and then kind of goes all the way around so that it makes that shape and it's not like one you know, pieces completely bending like that. So it kind of fits in together. And then just for the roof, I went ahead and just slapped a bunch of tiles on a plate. And I put some two by two round bricks with this little bar piece because it's another half plate and it didn't really line up perfectly. So that's just the quick and easy way to make it line up. So then you just kind of line that up with the brick at the bottom there like this. And then you just push in the center until it's flush with the sides like that and there you go this thing turned out really nice it was super simple and really easy and not very parts intensive which is nice there's like no structure on this entire thing it's just the hinge bricks and then the two round bricks that connect the top so i'm really really happy with this and basically i wanted to make this easily removable so basically i just built up this part here with a bunch of tiles and then i have some studs in the kind of corner areas just so i can attach it pretty quickly and then i just take the roof like this and i built this on a 16 by 16 plate because i'm not really going to need any of them for the mock and i built this base on a 16 by 16 so then you kind of just put it on there and snap it into those four studs that i just left like that so now it's on there looks really nice there's no kind of gaps or anything like that and it's easily removable just kind of grab a corner and pop it up I didn't really need to do this, but I wanted to just so I had access into the base of the building in case something went wrong with the lights, which I haven't hooked up yet, but that is basically what this building looks like. So I can go ahead and zoom out and bring the camera down. And that is this full building. Over on the right, you can see the awning and then kind of the nice roof and balcony and everything like that. And then over on the left, we have this bridge, which you can't really see from the angle you guys are at. And then we have the start of the next building. So I'm really, really happy with this. It turned out really nice. And this is probably the best way that I could make a rectangular building not look super boring and bland. So I think it turned out really nice. And that is all that I have kind of to show with this building so far. All right, so I've kind of reworked the roof from the last time that you guys saw it. I sent a picture of that to Daniel and some of my other friends, and they said that I should change it up a little bit, and this is the result of that. So basically, if you look at Theed from a top-down view, some of the Battlefront 2 images and also a little bit of Episode 1, you can see that the roofs with the dark orange actually have tan tops, which is not something that I remembered, but the pictures don't lie. So what I did was, Originally, I wanted this to be kind of rectangular, which is why it like came all the way to the edge on this side. And then on the other side, I like had three studs on either side and that didn't end up really looking that good. So the picture that I based this off was a square building just like this and it had the tan roof. And also the roof was actually a little bit lower than this rim going around the side. So I incorporated all of those things together Basically, now this is a square roof. It goes all the way out to the edge of each side, which makes a lot more sense. But basically, the way this works is now it's the same. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pull this apart. There we go. So basically, it's the same kind of build on the back here. And I just made this so it slides right in. And it's just, you know, tan tiles, plates, a bunch of weird stuff going on the bottom because it's just a weird size it's not an even number it's an odd number of plates across so then i had to come up with this weird funky thing but this basically just slides in on top like this that is the way that i'm doing the roof now 
really, really happy with that. So now this building is fully complete and I can go ahead and zoom out, kind of give you guys a look at the entire thing. I'm really happy with this. This thing turned out so much better than I was expecting it to because of just the boring shape. And honestly, because of how good it looks, I might go ahead and make like another one of these, change it up a little bit, but have kind of another one. I like the size think it works really well so I might have another one on the other side of the street because it's easier to build than a weird funky design like this which I actually put in a lot of work on this too so I'll get to that in a second but really really happy with this moving on to this building now I can go ahead and zoom in basically what I did was I built all of the sides now to be the same height and I wanted this to be taller than the building over here because I didn't want to have two buildings, you know, the exact same height. So this is now almost as tall as the top of this roof. And for the roof, I'm basically going to do a layer of snot with the slopes to kind of trace out this shape as good as I can. And then I'll do a stud dome on top of that. And the reason I'm doing a stud dome is because it's not a circle. It's actually a little bit of an oval shape. So can't do just a regular circle so that's why I'm going to do a stud dome and I'll just make it like an oval to kind of fit the same size so that is my idea for this so once I kind of finish this up I actually ran out of time this week I wanted to finish this but I didn't have enough time so I got everything done except for this section here all I need to do is build a window and then put some bricks on top of it so all of that is super easy I just didn't have time to get to it and then I'll figure out the roof but Everything is done with this. I added in a window on the front here and the lights and everything still work. So super happy with the progress that I made this week. I was hoping to be able to finish up both of these buildings, but even though I couldn't, I'm still really pleased with the amount of stuff that I got done. But that is what Theed is looking like so far. You can kind of get a look at the rest of Theed. And that reminds me, I actually went ahead and made some little bushes to go in here because I was looking at it and it was really flat and boring. So I went ahead and made some little flower bushes. Basically, it's just this piece right here. And I put on some white and blue and different colored flowers. So I have one here, one there, and one right here. Nothing crazy. I didn't want to overdo this. I didn't want to put any grass or anything like that. So I think that looks really nice, though. It adds in a nice amount of height because otherwise it was very flat. So I think it actually works really well and kind of complements the trees and everything like that. So that is pretty much the progress that I got done on Theed this week. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up episode 15 of Building Theed. I'm really happy with this progress that I got done this week, but I had a lot going on this week, which is why I couldn't finish the round one. So hopefully next week I'll have more time to work on the mock and be able to get more done. And if you guys made it to the end of the video, consider leaving a like. It lets me know that you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys are interested in following the progress of this mock, then definitely make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the updates. If you guys are interested in the lights that I'm using in this mock, they are Light My Bricks, and you can get $10 off your first purchase at Light My Bricks with the link at the top right corner of the screen. But that just about wraps up everything that I had for you guys this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.